Hi, it's DeWire. It's gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. For premium content, DeWire70905.substack.com. It's Saturday, August 28th, 2021. Let's talk about something unique to the world of, we'll call it, combat arts, right? MMA and boxing. You have a great example right now, right? A fighter trying to audition, trying to say the right thing to convince a great fighter to fight him, right? Now you have auditions all the time in boxing. Right now, Charles Martin, a Southpaw, is auditioning to fight Dylan White at heavyweight, right? I'm guessing Charles White feels that because he's a Southpaw, he'll be able to neutralize Dylan White's jab. I'm sure he's looked at Dylan White and he's thought to himself, well, you know, Dylan White has looked vulnerable at times. The end of that Joseph Parker fight, Dylan White knocked down, barely survives that fight. That first Prevetkin fight, Dylan White knocked out cold. The Anthony Joshua fight, right? Dylan White knocked out cold. I'm sure Charles Martin feels that he could put himself back in the heavyweight race by fighting Dylan White. But that's not the audition that interests me right now. The audition that interests me is a situation where the people involved seem to be doing the work of the boxing promoter. Right now, before Manny Pacquiao's fight against your Dennis Ugas, Freddie Roach was asked about undisputed, as well as unbeaten, 140-pound champion Josh Taylor. Now, Freddie Roach knows Josh Taylor. The two guys actually are friends. But in the heat of the moment, with a reporter asking questions right before Freddie Roach's fighter fought another guy, right, in a different weight class, right, 147 we're talking about for Pacquiao Ugas, not 140. Freddie Roach was asked about Josh Taylor and Freddie Roach, a boxing luminary who many people know, casual fans know Freddie Roach responded by saying worse to the effect of who is Josh Taylor? Right now, of course, Freddie knows who Josh Taylor is, <laughs> right? It's very hard not to know who an undisputed, unbeaten champion is. But you know the way it is. In the heat of the moment, Freddie's talking to some reporter. Freddie made a flippant comment, right? Nothing serious was intended by it. Now, by chance, Josh Taylor's hero, his idol in boxing is Manny Pacquiao, right? Josh Taylor, of course, has long wanted to fight Manny Pacquiao. Josh Taylor, by his own admission, was hoping Manny Pacquiao beat Ugas, right? Pacquiao would be a huge payday for Taylor. And, of course, the fight would be a huge payday for Pacquiao. So, now we have a situation. And it's worth a chuckle. It's going to be ongoing. You need to look at it. Now we have a situation where an undisputed champion is trying to become an opponent for his idol. But he wants to look respectful. He doesn't want to look disrespectful. This isn't a Charles Martin call out of Dylan White using colorful terms. No, 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 no. This is a situation where Taylor wants to look respectful. Right? Manny is his idol. But Taylor also wants to fight. <laughs> so, here's Josh Taylor's statement. According to BoxingScene.com, about what would have happened had he, not Ugas, fought Manny Pacquiao on the night of that Ugas fight. Here's Taylor. If I had been there on Saturday, I would have beaten him with no problems. 
call me crazy, but even when Pacquiao was very good, I still think I would have had a great chance against him. <laughs> Taylor continues. He looked old. Even Pacquiao of two or three years ago would have dealt with Ugas without problems. He was flat-footed, wasn't on the bounce. He still had the speed and power, but was a second off the pace. His timing made him look old. And now let me just say, bravo. <laughs> bravo. Folks, this is great trash talk. If you're Manny Pacquiao and you're reading lines like, even when Pacquiao was very good, <laughs> right? Even when Pacquiao was very good, what, he's not good now? Right, also, is there any ambiguity in the line, he looked old, right? He was flat-footed, wasn't on the bounce. Let me just say, in my opinion, one of the reasons Manny Pacquiao lost to Ugas, besides the fact that Ugas is, in my opinion, an elite defensive fighter, was the fact that Manny was about to fight a southpaw, Errol Spence. Manny's camp, no doubt, was geared toward fighting a southpaw. Then, of course, less than two weeks before the fight, Manny Pacquiao then is switched over to fighting a defensive right-handed fighter. Different style entirely. Errol Spence tries to come and find you. Ugas is laying in the pocket setting traps. So the fact that Manny still has the speed, the fact that Manny went the distance. It's not like Manny got blown out, folks. Right? If he looked old, he looked old going the distance in a fight that was, quite frankly, competitive. Might actually be the result of the different styles and the different dominant hands between Southpaw Errol Spence, who he signed to fight, and last-minute replacement, your Dennis Ugas. Let me also congratulate Josh Taylor for also finding a way to challenge Ugas, right? How can you get away with lines like, you know, even, that's the word, even Pacquiao of two or three years ago would have dealt with Ugas without problems. Folks, Sean Porter had problems against Ugas. Manny Pacquiao had problems against Ugas. When's the last time you saw an Ugas fight where you thought, wow, this guy's having no problems with Ugas? Does 140-pound champion Josh Taylor think that he would have no problems with 147-pound Ugas? Let me also say, too, we know who the winner is. It's fans like you and me. Think about what's being discussed here. You have an unbeaten, undisputed guy, in essence, challenging an all-time great. Right? Let's remember <laughs> Pacquiao, who now is supposed to be washed up after a fight where he went the distance. Right? After, of course being the only man to beat Keith Thurman as a pro. Right, Pacquiao, eight division champion, is being challenged by an undisputed fighter. Oh man, that sounds like a great fight to me. Now let's say Manny says, hey, you know, I'm running for office in the Philippines, the sport's been good to me, but I am in my 40s. Sooner or later, everyone has to walk away from the sport I'm going to walk away after losing a fight that went the distance, right? Let's say Manny Pacquiao moves on to the next stage of his life. Okay, fine. Well, if I'm Ugas, I'm circling Josh Taylor's picture. I'm showing up at Josh Taylor press conferences. 
I'm going to be somehow in the first two rows of Josh Taylor's next fight. I'm going to say, hey, look, <laughs> <You know? laughs> I am the WBA champ at 147 pounds. Right? If you feel that you would have beaten Manny and that Manny should have beaten me, then fight me now. Right, folks, where do we lose? For the record, I think Pacquiao today beats Josh Taylor. I think Taylor's an excellent fighter, don't get me wrong. But I do think Pacquiao's speed is singular and unlike a very disciplined Ugas. Right, Ugas is a guy who's there. He's not going to stray too far away from the script. I believe Josh Taylor has too much Billy Kahn in him. In other words, Josh Taylor has a script, it's working, he needs to trade with Regis Progre. <laughs> right? He needs to get in the pocket against guys. He needs to be a daredevil. Right? Winning is not enough. Josh Taylor needs to fight you. I believe that if you deviate from the script against Manny Pacquiao, you get hurt. Also, let's face it too, if Manny Pacquiao is all set up to fight Josh Taylor and the fight goes through, Taylor's not going to have the element of surprise that a guy who got the fight with less than two weeks notice, Ugas had, right? So I'm one of those who doesn't believe it's completely over for Manny Pacquiao. I also believe it takes a lot of skill and a lot of talent to be a tall guy like Ugas and to land body shots on Manny Pacquiao. For me personally, that's the story of the fight. Ugas is a dedicated body puncher and can hit you in the body even when you have power and hand speed. He has the construct figured out, right? It's not like he's getting hit with Manny Pacquiao straight lefts while he's going low to the body. Right, folks, that's a skill few have. I'm not sure if Josh Taylor has that skill. Understand, the margin of error against Manny Pacquiao is not that great. It's a very thin margin of error. Ugas threaded the needle. His style matched up with Manny's. Are we sure that Josh Taylor's style matches up with Manny's? Let me also say, too, you know, promoters sometimes need something to work with. <laughs> wow. <laughs> these, statements, these statements by Josh Taylor have a lot of red meat on the bone. Let me also say, too, could you imagine how awkward it's going to be if their pre-fight meetings, press conferences, and there's Freddie Roach and Josh Taylor's close by and Freddie's being asked about his statement of who is Josh Taylor. Let's just say there's a lot to work with here, folks. So given the high level of the guys involved, given the fact that Josh Taylor isn't Sven Aki, in other words, this is the guy with the resume who's actually willing to risk his unbeaten record against all-time greats who, two fights ago, dropped Keith Thurman and won that fight. By the way, for an old man, has anyone figured out that Manny Pacquiao's last two fights against unbeaten Keith Thurman and WBA champion Ugas. In other words, that's a level of opposition, quite frankly, a lot of guys are not engaging in at 147. Right? I see Terrence Crawford fighting old man. Right? Amir Khan. Kel Brook. Right? I don't see the fights at 147 where these old guys are saying, hey man, you know, Virgil Ortiz... You're unbeaten, 100% KO ratio, let's fight. You know, you know me, I'm, I'm Errol Spence, right? I don't see those fights happening. I'll give Spence credit. 
he did sign to fight Manny Pacquiao. Right? I'll give him credit. He fought Cal Brook when Cal Brook had the belt. Right? But I do fault Terrence Crawford, who I do feel is the best in the sport, pound for pound, for not being able to sign deals with guys like Errol Spence. Right? I know Crawford's all over YouTube saying, hey, I want to fight Spence. Right? Just understand, something isn't working there. Those fights aren't happening. Right? Then when Crawford fights a green machine, excuse me, mean machine, and gets dropped in the fight, Crawford, one, can't concede that he was dropped. Two, doesn't say, hey, okay, we have unfinished business. People thought the first fight was rough and tumble. I want to prove to you that I'm the best. Understand, it's not like Crawford has Errol Spence on his dance card. Right, the Sean Porter fight, I'm looking forward to that fight. But let's be real, that fight's only happening because Porter's a mandatory. Because people other than the promoters were involved. Right, it's because the sanctioning body stepped in. This is one of those rare times in boxing where the sanctioning body is helping save the sport. The sanctioning body stepped in and said, hey, hey, Terrence, you have to fight this man. Right now, in that world, Manny Pacquiao in his 40s, arguably, is fighting more vibrant competition than guys in their prime. Right? Keith Thurman's been around a long time. Why hasn't he fought Terrence Crawford? Why hasn't he fought? Errol Spence. Do you really care that Errol Spence thinks Keith Thurman is corny? Could you imagine if an Ali gave that explanation in the 1970s as to why he wasn't fighting Joe Fraser? Could you imagine Ali saying, hey, George Foreman is corny. I'm not going to fight him. Folks, I'm telling you as someone who was alive in the 70s, Ali would have been booed. Ali would have been viewed as bogus. Here in 2021, Errol Spence is able to say, hey, Keith Thurman is corny. Reporters are laughing along with him. Right? No one's demanding the fight. How is that possible? So forgive me. Here you have an old schooler. A guy who fought Oscar De La Hoya was an underdog in the fight. Right? A guy who fought Marquez four times. A guy who, when you think about his era, you realize, wow, how would he do against Marco Antonio Barrera? Oh, we fought him. How would he do against El Terrible? Oh, we fought him. Right? A guy who fought Floyd Mayweather. A guy who fought Timothy Bradley. A guy who fought Keith Thurman. Right? A guy who fought Ugas. Manny Pacquiao is one of the few guys in the sport who I feel would be willing to fight Josh Taylor, right? You know, it's sad that we have to depend on a guy in his 40s at welterweight to save the sport when he's planning to run for the presidency of a foreign country. But that's what boxing's come down to. Right? Nobody wanted to fight Ugas. Manny Pacquiao did. Nobody wanted to fight Keith Thurman. Manny Pacquiao did. Now we have a situation where Pacquiao, after a loss, has all eyes on him. What's his next move? Josh Taylor is doing one hell of an audition to be Pacquiao's next fight. Pacquiao has unfinished business with Ugas. I hope he doesn't take that fight because I think Ugas will always be tough for him. Right? Just understand. Truly great fighters challenge themselves. Just ask yourself a question. Do you feel a promoter 
has enough power to turn down a Manny Pacquiao when Pacquiao says, look, man, I want to fight Errol Spence. Right? I want to fight Ugas. Right? When a fighter tries to suggest that the promoters are keeping him from big fights, maybe that works if the fighter's 21, 22. I'll buy that from Daniel Dubois. Not that Dubois is saying that, but I would buy that from some young guy on the way up. Okay, fine. When you're in your 30s and you've signed the promotional contracts yourself, there's really no excuse, right? I expect Terrence Crawford, who I do view as the best in the sport pound for pound, to beat Sean Porter. I hope Crawford then understands that if he's going to maintain his brand, let's say Errol Spence is more hurt than the public realizes, right? We'll, we'll give Spence a pass torn slash detached retina, that's a career-threatening injury, right? We'll give Errol Spence a pass. If Crawford is going to keep his brand, in my opinion, he needs to fight a Manny Pacquiao, a Keith Thurman, a Jaron Ennis, a Virgil Ortiz, right? You can't maintain the brand if you're not getting it done against that level of opposition in the ring. Josh Taylor realizes that. So, Josh Taylor, who, unlike many of the fighters out there, doesn't seem to realize that Father Time, sooner or later, is going to catch up to all of us. And that you, if you want to fight a guy who's in his 40s before he leaves the sport, you've got to speak up. Josh Taylor right here is doing just that. This is a story worth watching. Who is Manny Pacquiao's next fight going to be against? They claim he wants to fight in January, right? I hope for the sake of the sport, it's someone like Josh Taylor, Terrence Crawford. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. The Josh Taylor comments can be found, by the way, on an excellent site, BoxingScene.com. Right, again, let me just quote the paragraph that's really interesting to me. Josh Taylor, in commenting on Pacquiao against Uga, said, If I had been there on Saturday, I would have beaten him. That's Manny Pacquiao with no problems. Call me crazy. But even when Pacquiao was very good, I still think I would have had a great chance, not a good chance, a great chance against him. Boxing, find a way to give us that fight next. Let the fans be the winners on that one. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I do think Taylor, excuse me, I do think Pacquiao beats Taylor. Why? Because Pacquiao, too fast, too sudden, too strong. The speed is still there, as Taylor himself tells you in these comments. The speed is still there. I believe the timing would be too. As long as the opponent Pacquiao prepares for is actually the opponent he faces in the ring. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.